Hey guys, thanks for joining for episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Raids. This is a newer game by Yellow Games. It is a 2-4 to four player game that takes roughly half an hour to 45 minutes to play, and is a competitive game, so each player is working against the other players to gain the most glory to be the overall winner at the end of the game. So in the game itself, each player is going to be playing a Viking clan that is going to go on four epic voyages around the map. And during these voyages, they are going to be trying to collect different tiles, raiding different villages, fighting off monsters and each other to be able to collect all these different things to gain the most glory to be the overall winner at the end of the game. So my opinions on this one, I had a really good time with this one. It's very easy to, to learn this one. It's very easy to teach as you guys are going to see. There's not a whole bunch of rules to this one. So it gets right down into it and gets to the strategy right away, which is a lot of fun. You get to fight your other opponents by trying to move into their spaces to collect their tiles instead of letting them, which will continue to move them along. And you have to do this by managing the Vikings that you have in your longship, as well as getting different tiles that will help you in these different endeavors, on top of being able to fight different monsters and collecting different runic stones and all kinds of different stuff throughout the game to hopefully get you the most glory at the end to be the overall winner. So of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear you guys in the comments below as well. Is this one that, you, one that you've played? Is this one you're interested in? Do you guys enjoy this one, yes or no? Let me know in those comments below what you guys think of this as well. So if you like these videos, if you enjoy what I do, please consider that like button, subscribing to my channel so I can continue to grow and bring these games to you guys. If you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you guys how to play. Throughout the game, you're going to be passing and collecting a number of different tiles, and there's a whole slew of these. So let's go and take a look at each one of these. So first we have ruined tiles. And throughout the game, players will be collecting these, and at the end of the game, they will be worth a number of points based on the number of ruins you have, all the way up to 15 points for five ruined tiles. And you can have multiple sets of these. Pillage tiles, as players pass them, the first player that passes a pillage tile will get three points, and the second player will get one. Any other player that passes them won't get any. Then we have visit tiles, which the first player again will gain two Vikings, and the second player that passes it will receive one. Sail tiles will add, be added to your ship, and at the end of each voyage you'll get one Viking for a single sail and two Vikings for the double sail. Malnir tiles are going to give you bonus points at the end of the game based on the number of Vikings you have multiplied by the number of Malnir tiles you have. So if you have a 2.1 here, you'll multiply each Viking in your ship by two points. And this one would get multiplied by one. And you can multiply them by the combination of the two as well. Then we have weapon tiles with these. Each weapon tile is gonna either show a single bladed ax or a double bladed ax. And these will be combined and will help you fight monsters throughout the game. And there's a number of different monsters, and each monster is going to have a number of points at the top and will be passed, so you can never stop on a monster tile. And these tiles will subtract from these, and I will show you that more later. There are two different types of port tiles. We have a single and a double port tile, and when a player picks up a port tile, they can sell a number of goods based on that tile. So this one will let you sell one, and this one will let you sell two. And you have to sell them from in your ship. So if you have good tiles in your ship, you can sell those at a port. On top of that, when you collect a port tile, you'll also gain a Viking for that port tile. The last tile we have are the pennant tiles, and these will get you victory points at the end of the game based on that number as well. There is also a number of different harbor tiles included in the game. The first voyage each game will always have the starting harbor tile, which is, has the red background on it, and also will have no image in the top corner. The rest of the tiles will all have an image in the top corner, which the players are trying to collect during that harbor round. All the rest of the tiles are going to have an image in the top corner, which the players are going to be competing during that voyage round to get the most of, to get the most points. At the end of each round, the player that has the most of whatever is listed in that top corner will receive 6 points, the second player will receive 3, and the third player will receive 1. And if you're playing with 4 players, the fourth player will not receive any. Go ahead and separate each of the voyage tiles into its different set number, and then you can go ahead and shuffle up each of those different sets. Once you have all four sets shuffled up, go ahead and grab the harbor tiles. You're going to place the red harbor tile or starting harbor tile in front of the first voyage tiles, and then you can go ahead and shuffle up the rest of these, and then randomly deal out one to each of the other four or other three voyage tile sets. 
the rest of the harbor tiles can be returned to the game box as you won't use them for this game. For player setup, each player is going to choose a longship color and they will receive the longship tile as well as the ship that matches that color. From there, I want to go into a couple details about each player's longships real quick. So first off, there are five different spaces in each player's longship where they can place tiles as they collect them. And these tiles are going to change your longship in different ways. They will take away shields potentially with some of the tiles or simply just replace them. And with those shields, as you get Vikings, you'll be placing Vikings on each of those shields, filling your longship up. Now at any point in time, if your longship is completely filled and you receive Vikings, then you will not receive those Vikings and they will just go right back to the supply of Vikings. To set up each player, on top of that, based on the number of players, as you guys can see on this chart, you're going to choose one player randomly to be the starting player, and you can do this any way you want to. Uh, the easiest way i found is to take all the ships, shuffle them up, and choose one, have somebody draw one, and that player will be the starting player. From there, that player will receive one Viking, so we'll go ahead and say that our green player is our starting player, so he'll receive one Viking. And then going clockwise around the table, each other player will receive a number of Vikings based on the chart. So our blue player will receive two, our purple or pink player will receive two, and our last player to go, our orange player, will receive three Vikings to start. Now there is a variant to this if you're playing a two-player game, which is referred to in the back of the rulebook for setup. For board setup, you can go ahead and place the board out in the middle of the table, place all the Vikings that you have remaining in the open sea area, then you can grab the starting harbor tile with the red back on it and the no symbol up top and place it in the harbor space. Then grab the number one voyage tiles and place them out along the path. From there then you're going to place a number of vikings in each village based on the number of players. So with us playing a four player game we'll have four vikings in each village. And we'll also have three vikings in the visit space. And again, the first player to pass that will receive two, and the second one to pass that will receive one. The last step is placing our players in the harbor. So our starting player, our first player, will go in the four slot, and then it'll work down from there to our last player. So our green player was the first player, so he'll go in the four slot. Then blue, pink, and finally orange will be our last player. From there, you can also place out all of the coins in a general area, as well as the other tiles. Before moving into the game, I want to cover some of the features of the map real quick. So the players are always going to be moving in a clockwise manner around the map. They can never backtrack as the arrows are all pointing in the same direction. So you'll follow the line along the path until you get back to the harbor. Then each of the different areas is going to have a spot for a tile to go. And depending upon the tile that is there, you can stop your Viking ship there to try to claim that tile. Now there are going to be villages, there's three village spaces, one here, here, and here, and you can never stop on a village space as the arrow shows, you have to pass over it. When you pass over it, you'll get to claim one viking from that village. Monster tiles work exactly the same way, you can never stop on a monster tile, you must pass over it and move on to the next tile or somewhere else, but as you pass through a monster, you can either choose to fight it or sacrifice one of your Vikings to be able to move past it if you have one. If you don't have any Vikings, then you don't have to pay a Viking to pass through it. You can pass through and keep moving. And I'll explain more how that works a little bit later. And the same thing goes with raid and visit tiles as well. You can never stop on those tiles. You'll pass through them and then collect Vikings if they're there or coins if they are there as well. Finally, moving back into the harbor, the la when all four players are back there, the voyage for that round will be over, and then you'll set up for the next round. Each voyage is played over an undefined number of turns. During each turn, the players are not going to go in a clockwise order, but instead, the player furthest back is going to go and take their turn. And this can lead to a one player having multiple turns in a row. Each turn is broken down into two phases, which are done in order. The first phase in each turn is going to be take a voyage tile, and then the second phase is going to be navigate. During your first turn at the start of each voyage, you're going to skip this first phase and go straight to the navigation phase as there is no voyage tile to take during this first turn. The second phase of a player turn is to navigate. During this phase, you must move your longship marker and you must navigate following the direction of the arrows printed on the board. So you must move around the board in this manner. And there are a set of rules. There are two rules that you must follow when navigating. 
The first rule is to discard all voyage tiles between you and the next player in front of you. And one important note with this is at the start of a voyage, only the last player to leave their starting position in the harbor must catch up to the nearest longship token. They must discard all voyage tiles between them and the closest player before navigating. This means that in a four player game, the first three players do not need to catch up to the nearest player since they start off on the same space with at least one other player. The second rule is to navigate to a tile you wish to visit next. Following the voyage path, always following the arrows, you're going to choose the next tile you wish to stop on along that path. With a couple of exceptions, you can never stop on a village tile as it has the arrow that indicates you're going to have to continue on. And when you pass a village, you'll go ahead and collect one Viking along the way. The other tiles you cannot stop on are monster tiles. You have to either fight the monster by discarding the number of Vikings minus the number of weapon blades you have. And I'll show you that more later. So you have to continue moving on or you can sacrifice one Viking to continue moving on and just bypassing that monster. You can also never stop on visits or pillage spaces. If you pass them and they still have Vikings, you get to claim them or the coins for those. And there's also some rules if you land on a tile that has a Viking longship on it ready, you'll have to enter into a fight. And I'll cover that in just a minute. So that's a lot of rules to take in. So let me show you some examples of this now so you can see how this works. So we're going to go ahead and start with this first turn. And I'm not going to do any fights yet so that you guys can just see these basic steps. And then we're going to cover that next. So starting with our, our last player, which is our first player, or the last ship, he's going to start his turn. So he's going to go ahead and move along the path until he finds a tile he wishes to stop at. So with our green ship here, let's go ahead and stop on this ruined space here. And then his turn is over. So then we're going to move on to the next player. So this blue player here will move along the path. He's going to go ahead and stop on this one here. Then our pink player is going to go and she will go along the path and she's going to keep moving. So she'll pass this space here. She'll collect one Viking and add it over to her tile. And then she has to keep moving. So she has to choose whether she wants to fight that monster or not. So she is going to go ahead and fight the monster. So she'll discard all three of her Vikings and defeat that monster tile. So that'll go over to her area. And then she has to keep moving because you can never stop on a tile with a monster. So then she's going to go ahead and choose to stop here. Then our last player is going to go. So first off, he has to catch up. So any tiles that are between him and the last, the nearest Viking longship are discarded. So we have to discard both of these. From there, then he can choose to move. And again, he could stop on this space and fight this Viking, but we're not going to do that yet because, like I said, I'm not going to do that. We're going to go over that a little bit later. So he has to keep moving. He's going to pass the village here to collect that Viking. And then he has to keep moving. So he's going to go ahead and stop here. Now that all of our players are out of the harbor, we're ready to take our complete turns. So our blue player will be the next one to go as he's the furthest longship back, and he has to start his turn with the first phase, which is to take the voyage tile that he's in front of. So now that he's going to add this one to his longship, and he can choose any space in the longship to add it to, and anytime he add, he can rearrange these tiles and Vikings at any point during his turn or any time during the game so to make room or change things out. Now, if his longship is full, he can also choose to discard any of the tokens to make room for a new token. And he can even discard the new token if he wants to. From there, then he's gonna move on to the second part of his turn. So he's gonna have to move. And again, he would have to discard any tiles between him and the last player. So there aren't any, so he's gonna go ahead and move. And again, he could choose to stop on this spot here and challenge this guy by fighting him, but he's not going to, he'll keep moving. He's going to collect one Viking, and then he'll keep moving along that path. And he can keep going as far as he wants to. So he's going to, let's go ahead and shoot him all the way up here. So he will collect another Viking from this village that he passes. And he also passed this spot up here. So he's the first one to pass, so he will gain two Vikings for that space. So our next player to go is our green player. So he's going to start off by taking the ruined tile, and he'll add it to his area. Let's get these out of the way so we don't take those. And then from there, then he's going to go ahead and move to his next tile. So first off, he has to discard any tiles between him and the last player, which there aren't any. So then he's going to go ahead and move. He has to collect the Viking as he passes that village. And he'll keep moving along. And he's going to go ahead and try to stop here. So then our pink player will go. And this is going to continue as the players move along the path until the players get back to the harbor. 
Now with this first harbor spot, which is always going to be the first voyage spot, the first player that gets there will receive the six coins, the second player that gets to the harbor will receive three, and the last player, or the third player to get there will receive one. The fourth player would not receive any coins, so in that way some players may want to just skip over some of these tiles to get there first and get those extra points. Combat is going to happen between two players anytime a, a Viking longship stops on the same tile as another Viking longship. The longship that stops on that tile must sacrifice one Viking first, and then the other player that is already on that tile can choose to either fight the Viking longship that stopped there, or continue moving on and fleeing from that battle. If the player wishes to stay on that tile, then he has to discard one Viking plus an additional Viking to stay on that tile. And this will continue going back and forth between players until one player either does not have enough Vikings to meet the needs or that player chooses to flee. So for example with our pink player she would have to discard one Viking and then our orange player would have to discard two. If the pink player wishes to stay on that tile then she would have to discard three Vikings and going back to the orange player if he wants to stay on there at that point then he would have to discard four and this is going to continue going up again like I said until one player either chooses to flee or has to because they're out of Vikings or don't have enough Vikings. So let me continue the turn now that we've covered combat. So our pink player does not have any Vikings so she cannot choose to stop on a tile that has other ships as she cannot enter into combat yet at least initially. So let's go ahead and continue moving. So she'll pass this village, so she'll gain one Viking from that. And then she's going to continue moving. And let's go ahead and bypass all the way up to here. So that way then she gets both of those guys as well. Then we're going to go ahead and move on to the next player. So our orange player over here does have some Vikings. So he may wish to challenge somebody. So he sees that green, the green player doesn't have a lot of Vikings, so there's a good chance that he might be able to push him out of that space. So the first thing he's going to do is collect the, the tile that he's on, and then he's going to go ahead and discard any tiles between the two, which there aren't any, so then he's going to move. So he is going to choose to stop here. Now he has to discard one Viking from his longship, and then the green player could choose to discard two, forcing the orange player to either continue moving, or he would have to discard all three of his remaining Vikings. But our green player doesn't want to lose all the Vikings that he has right now, so he is going to go ahead and flee that location, and so he would have to continue moving along the path until he stops on another spot. So he's going to go ahead and continue moving until he stops up here, and so he will collect his two Vikings that he passes the villages of. Then it's going to go back to our orange player again. He's going to go ahead and collect the tile that he's on, and he'll add it to his longship. And he can add it anywhere within there. And then he has to discard any tiles between him and the last long ship so all three of these will go away and then he can go ahead and move so he's gonna go ahead and move along the path he'll gain his Viking here and he sees the blue player has quite a bit of Viking so he's gonna try to thin that down a little bit he'll stop there and discard one and the blue player can choose to fight him or continue moving on himself so he's gonna go ahead and fight him so he's gonna discard two Vikings so it'll come back to our orange player who's going to push his luck, he'll go ahead and discard all three of his remaining Vikings to try to stay on that space. So our blue player now, he could choose to discard all four if he wants to stay on there, but he doesn't really want to spend all the rest of his Vikings, so he's going to go ahead and continue moving. So he's going to go ahead and finish off here. So he'll collect one Viking from the village, but then as he passes the monster, he's going to go ahead and choose to sacrifice a Viking to continue moving on. So then he ends in the first space in the harbor. So then we're going to move back over to our orange player who again gets to go. He gets to collect this tile and add it to his ship. And then he can he has to discard any, which there aren't any between him and the next Viking. So he'll go ahead and continue on. And he is going to go ahead and try to stop here. So he'll collect the one Viking for that space. It'll move to our next player, the pink player. So she's going to go. She will move up here and discard one. Our orange player does not have two, so he has to move, so he has to go, so he'll have to stop here. As he doesn't have enough to fight the monster, he only has one, he has to discard him to sacrifice to get past the monster. And then it would go to our next player, and of course the pink player would have to claim that tile as well. I almost forgot that. So our green player would be the next one to go, who is going to go ahead and claim this tile. 
and then he's going to go ahead and move. So he doesn't really want that one. He's going to go ahead and move past this one, but he's going to fight this monster. So he has one axe, so it's going to reduce the monster's power by one. So then he also only has to spend two Vikings in order to defeat that monster. So then he'll take that one and add it over here and continue moving and finishing off his turn here. Finally, we'll finish up with the pink player. Again, she will claim her tile and then discard any tiles between the two, which there aren't any left. So then she'll finish up last. So then we'll give out points. So our blue player was the first one in, so he will get six points. Our orange player was the second one, so he'll receive three. And our green player was the last or the third in, so he'll receive one. And our pink player did not get any. From there, then each player that has any sales will receive one Viking per sale. So our guy down here, the pink player has one. And then we would go ahead and move on to the next voyage. So our player would, our harbor would be discarded. We'd add the harbor under the second set of tiles. And then again, we would place these out. Go ahead and place out four Vikings in each of the villages again. So at this point, then we will go ahead and start the second voyage again, just like the first one with the players moving off the harbor and continuing around the map. And of course, like I said, a, a player could choose to go all the way around the map and come right back to the harbor if they wanted to. They're going to be missing a lot of tiles, but they could choose to do that if they wanted to. The one other thing I want to point out are the port tiles. So let's go ahead and say, for example, that our pink player was over here and she had moved into the start of her phase when she claims this tile. So when she claims this tile, she can sell one of her goods that is in her longship for that value. So then you would remove it from the longship and place it off to the side. And then she also gains one Viking that she can add to her longship. And she can even gain a Viking even if she didn't have any goods to sell. So she can still stop at a port just to gain that Viking. The last step in the game is scoring. So after all the players completed their fourth voyage, then we're ready to move into the scoring round. And one thing to note before doing that is to make sure that each player gets their Vikings for their sales for that final round. As anybody that has the millionaires will also get points for those based on their Vikings, so that could make a difference. So from there, then we're going to total up all the points that we have. So first off, let's go ahead and take care of the Melnares. So you get, based on the number of symbols in there, you multiply that by the number of Vikings you have in your ship. So since we have two, we're going to multiply each Viking by two points. So we have two, four, six, eight Viking points for that. And then we get a number of points for the goods that we have sold. So we'll get nine points there for 17. We would not receive any points for these because we have not sold them and they're still in our ship. Then we get points for our pennants, so we have three, so that's 20 points. The ruins, based on the number of ruins we get, we get a number of points, so we have three ruins. So if under the three is a six, so that is going to be 26 points. And then we get points for each of the monsters we've slain. So we have 26 plus three for 29. Five puts us up to 34, and the six will bring us up to 40. And then finally we get points for all of the coins that we have. So we have 46 points, 47, 50, and 53. So our Viking here has ended with 53 points, and then all the other players will total up theirs, and the player that has the highest amount of glory will be the winner. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by my Facebook and Twitter accounts, let me know what you guys are playing, or if you guys have any requests, or you can drop them in the comments. If you like these videos, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel, as it helps me to grow and bring these games to you guys. If you want to get notifications anytime I get new videos up, also ring that bell. And as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do appreciate it, and I do try to make the best possible videos take into account everything that you guys say. So until next time, I will see you guys later.